So we've got a little bit of cleaned up wax broody crap. And I'm just reading the directions sitting here in the dark. Bloody crap winter time, isn't it? The sun goes down too damn early and you've got to sit out here and get cold. The only upside to it is you get to drink red wine because technically you've knocked off. Mind you, the cameraman turns up and you can't knock off. Anyway, I've got this cool contraption. I've got it, bought myself a... I'm guessing that stands for Aussie because it's AU. I would imagine that's an Aussie wax melter. Would that be right? Anyway, it's got Australian made, so that's pretty cool. Gotta love us Aussies, we got shit going on. Anyway, I'm reading the directions, which you wouldn't believe, because it says here if you fuck this shit up, you don't get guaranteed. So we don't want to do that, especially if we're going to be filming it, because then you won't believe me if I do screw it up when I ring you up and I'm start blowing your shit up. So anyway, it's all good. So we're going to try and make some pure wax. According to the website, we get some nice clean wax out of this rather than dirty wax. It's a, so this is a double boiler. If you don't know what a double boiler is, you have hot water on the outside and then a cooler chamber in the middle. So instead of going to all the trouble of having a saucepan inside a saucepan, you've got a purpose milk saucepan inside a saucepan. I guess that would, anyway, doesn't matter. Believe it or not, I've read these instructions a couple of times. I'm still slightly confused. I should have given the cameraman a chance to read them, but you know, he wants to blame me when I blow it up, so it's all good. So let's go, it says here, first of all, we have to put some water in the outside chamber. So you've got an outside chamber here, and obviously an inside chamber. So the water's gonna fill up in between that and the saucepan that's inside. So if you've ever tried melting chocolate, you'll know what a double boiler is. You get the, well, what the hell, you get a silver bowl, or a metal bowl on top of a water source, and you boil the water in that, and then you're softly melting the chocolate. Of course, you could just be cool like my mother-in-law, and she just does it in the microwave in a jelly dessert bowl, as long as you're very cautious, because if you're not cautious when you do it in the microwave, you end up with baked chocolate, which is kind of shit. It's kind of just, and I've done that if you're wondering. It's just kind of ordinary. Sorry, mother-in-law, who's trying to teach me to cook, which is rather cool. She's the sponge cake queen, my mother-in-law, would you believe? She's a bloody good cook, that woman. Anyway, I digress. Here we go. So we've got the double boiler and we've got to fill it up with water. So we're going to fill up the outside part according to the instructions, which says caution. That's a, that must be happened quite often. I reckon I read through these directions somewhere and it says, if you run this without any water in there, it's not guaranteed. Big bold letters in here. So I can't, anyway, I don't know. I should show you. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking they've had a few phone calls from people that said, we've used your wax melter and it's had a little meltdown. It's blooming blowing itself up. And I like the fact, look at this, the Aussies think of everything. They've even sent me a funnel. So I don't even have to steal the wife's funnel. How bloody good's that? They've obviously had blokes ring up and go, I'm getting divorced because my wife wants her funnel back. But no, what do they do? They send you one along. And you've got a little thermometer. So you go, whoop, check, whoop. That could be a bit rude if you pop. Anyway, don't. That's what they do to the puppy dogs, isn't it? When you go to the vet, whoop, poor little things. Yeah, hang on a minute. Did they glue that shit in there? Fucking awesome's that? That's brilliant. Look at that shit. That's fucking. I tell you what, Mr. Aussie Wax Melt of Dudes, that's a fucking brilliant idea. Check you guys out. You've even, you've even stuck the funnel to the threaded on bit that goes in the hole. Mind you, you haven't got real level. Look at that. It's a bit of a merry go round funnel. And I've stuck it a little bit crooked so it looks like I did it myself, which is pretty bloody brilliant. So it's a Bush Bee Man funnel. It's going to fit right in this place. I'm feeling quite confident. Anyway. So here's the insidey bit. So as you can see, the outside's a lot bigger than the inside part. So you're gonna have all this wall here filled up with water, which is gonna create your double boiler. And then you're gonna put your wax inside here. And hopefully, in theory, the clean wax is gonna pour out of there. And then my missus, my missus, who is quite ingenious, has discovered all these really cool uses for wax. Not just making candles. She made this wicked ass lip balm which I'm not a lip balm person, as you could imagine. You, know, you can imagine the Bush Bee Man with his lip balm isn't really happening. But anyway, I had a cracked lip during the harvest and it was really giving me the tingles up. See, I can't even do it. See, it's bloody no good not trying to swear. That's crap. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I rubbed a bit of that shit on there for... A... No, hang on, I can't even say shit because apparently if you say shit about beauty products, you're rubbing shit on your face, which is kind of weird. <sighs> anyway, I put her lip balm on my lips and on my cracked lip and it healed it up in a couple of days and I was most impressed. So if we ever figure out all the logistics and legal crap about that 
and we get, actually get my wax melter working. Hence, we're here in the dark because the wife's going, get me the wax organised, you useless bush bee man. So here I am. So we're giving it a crack. You never know. If we get this shit worked out, you might have some bush bee man lip balms on your lips. So we had to buy some demineralised water, which is pretty simple to get from the supermarket because apparently, Mr. Aussie Wax Melter Dude, you'd be most impressed that did read your directions and it says that it's... Oh shit, I'm, I'm crap with memory, so... It says we're using... Hang on, I've got to put my eyes back on. We're using a certain grade of stainless steel, which is... Unit body is made of 302 grade stainless steel, which isn't as excitable as 316 stainless steel. I didn't even know there was grades of stainless steel, but anyway. Apparently, if you use the high-grade stainless steel, the crap's really hard to use. And then that would have been price prohibitive. Because it says it would be another thousand dollars dear, so... I think that would have been a little bit out of that. I've got to sell a hell of a lot of lip balm to pay for my me melder up machine. I wonder if the wife's going to buy that crap off me. Do you reckon I could... you reckon she'll buy the wax? Can you imagine that? Can you... Yeah, can you just imagine that, husbands out there trying to sell wax to your own wife? I, you know what? She's gonna sell more lip balm than I could even sell honey and make a squillion and then not even pay me for my own wax, I'll bet you. I know how this is gonna work. <laughs> anyway, sorry, here we go. Let's pour some water in our jacket. Oh, listen to that. We're going nicely. Now, now viewers, as Paul Hogan would have said when he was popular, there's a little window here that's gonna indicate when the, when the water's in the right spot. But due to the constraints of filming, I have to be around here so you can see me pouring crap in here, which is pretty boring, but anyway, just the same. So keep an eye on the window for me and everybody sing out when the water comes up, all right? Pick that up for me. Come on. Oh, Jiminy. Oh, I've been out shoveling almonds all day today, so I'm a bit weary. Anyway, so what do we got here? Use demineralized water. Demineralized. Whew, look at that. Hey, check that out. Check it out. I even read it. And it even says it on here too. Ha! You'd be proud of me. <laughs> well, not if you're not. <laughs> okay. And it reckons, so we've got a little thermostat around here, it reckons to run it at about 80 odd. So it says here, if you are using just cappings, the cappings honey, capping, cappings, you know the capping bits, you don't need to add any water in the inside the actual saucepan or boiler or whatever you want to call it. But we're using some recycled old, old wax that we've already half cleaned, which you saw earlier when we did it in the saucepan. And we've cooled that off and we're gonna run that. Because apparently you can't use brewed wax in this container because you'll block the taps up. But anyway, that's yet to be proven. I mean, you know, a blank could always get a coat hanger and wriggle the friggin' shit through the hole and make it happen. But anyway, so I've gotta go and get some water. So when you see me pour the water inside the saucepan, it doesn't have to be demineralized water in here. It's just that some slack prick can't find a bucket. So I'm just gonna recycle these plastic jars, all right? Just don't stress out. <laughs> cool, so I'm back from the kitchen. Now this could be the interesting part of this, this excitement. I was just thinking when I was walking back here, this is the sort of stupid shit that happens. You get up tomorrow morning and you've left one of these containers here with rainwater in it and one with demineralized water in it and you're not sure which was which. So you've got to make sure if you're gonna re recycle this crap, either you peel the label off, put a big red texture across there like my father-in-law would do, or slap bush me band or just tip the shit out so it's not in the jug in the morning. Cause otherwise, you know, then you don't know where the hell you are. Anyway, so we're gonna put some water in here up to the bottom tap. God, that, I don't think I, I really need a better, hang on, I must have fucked that shit up. That must be the drain tap. Wait on, we better reread read the directions. That can't be right. Hell, I can spit more water than that. Oh, can hell. Which bit do you fill it up to? <sighs> Tell you what, reading the directions is annoying the shit out of my camera, man, the poor lad. I've been reading away here for, like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And guess what? The bit I wanted to find, which was how full to fill the chamber of the internal chamber, because you've filled up to that line and then you've got to fill this inside bit because we've got the wax going on. It's the first line, first line in the cleaning wax guide, you dropkick. Honestly, I am down here reading all this crap and I figured out what, I figured out what I'm doing tomorrow. I didn't know what I was doing tonight. But anyway, it's all good. So we've got to fill it just above this tap. So is that when we put the wax in here and it melts a bit, we can get all the floaty bits out. I'm assuming the floaty bits will come out of there. 
But then, then if we lowered it down too far, then the bloody wax would be... Oh, hang on. Yeah, I guess you let a little bit out until the wax goes below. That, you'd only want a little bit out. Wouldn't you? So then you could pour the good wax out. Or not. I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out that shit tomorrow. If we get that far. <laughs> Rightio! So here we go. Here's our recycled jugs. Our non-mineralised water. That'd suck if I had a tap on, wouldn't it? Now, this is the moment when you tip that out or you get a texture and mark it. What should we do? We should tip it out. Maybe I'll tip it on, on your boot. They've even put a little awesome little hooky thing on the side of here so you can hook your, hook your, hang on. What the fuck does that do? How does that work? Anyway, you can hook your thumb up. I noticed here, you can hook. Well, maybe you can't. Maybe I'm full of shit. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, look at that. All right, Harry. You can hook your thermometer on the edge of the jolly wax machine we jig. So you don't even have to hang on to it. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. It's only just reaching, so I wonder if we should have put a bit more water in there. But once you put wax in, it'll be full. Very good point, very good point. <laughs> anyway, so we've got to let that warm up for a little bit. But while we're waiting for that to warm up, I would just like to have a little conversation with our viewers. But there's been some confusion about this whole crowdfunding Patreon funding, who's funding funding, and me asking about money is a bit fucking no, it's just not my forte, I don't know what the hell's going on, but what I do know is that the Patreon funding is so, because we've had a lot of people go, oh, well, you should come around Australia, and we would love to come around Australia and see, some, and actually even had some New Zealand dude email me saying we can come over there, which I thought was pretty cool. But anyway, we plan to go around Australia and film our Aussie beekeepers and our mates in the system, I think we've got a big bee conference coming up in June, which could be kind of cool. And we plan to go around Australia, but that's that's what the Patreon y Patre is it Patreons? The Patreon page is about. The crowd the crowdfunding was about one off trip to America, not necessarily about funding the team and funding our actual programme in general. Does that make I don't know, I'm think I'm I'm almost as confused as you guys out there in the audience, but anyway, I'd just like to clarify that because I've had a few emails about people that are a little bit well, especially our Aussie fans are a little bit concerned that we're not going to go around Australia. And we definitely plan to go around Australia. Anyway, like I was saying, I really suck at this whole talking about money thing. It's not really what this show is about. Our show, this show is all about entertainment. We didn't really start this off to make money or do any about that. It's just that people want us to do more cool shit. And of course, there's only so many resources I have to put into this. I mean, I'm, I don't know. Anyway, I, I, we're, we're planning on going around Australia. And if we get you know, some Patreon support to do that, and we're gonna rock that shit, because I mean, I reckon that'd be awesome. But, yeah, anyway. But we'll probably do some, we'll probably go a bit on our, off our own back, just for the hell of it, because I'm kind of loving this shit. I didn't think I would, but I'm kind of enjoying it. And when I'm off to the B conference regardless, so that'll be cool. So this is a little bit of pre-cleaning stuff. So we've got the, so we had some really, we had some really messed up grubby wax. And so I thought we'd just clean it up. But the thing that I did find, you know, when you read up some cool directions, actually I was reading in their directions, which I hadn't actually read before, because on the bottom, when you, get the, when you get the wax out of your saucepan, there's a, like a layer of all this... Populous? No? I don't know what it is, but anyway, it's really crappy shit. And it's, it's got a little bit of wax in it, and you scrape all that off, so there's like a, you know, depending on how much wax you've got, you scrape it off there. And they said in there, they make awesome fire lighters. So I was thinking, I've thrown all that shit in the bin. So that well, was pretty dumb, wasn't it? So yeah, anyway, so I've, I've defilighted myself. Anyway, I digressing yet as, as usual. So now we've got this big flying saucer. That looks like a, that does look like a pizza, doesn't it? Does it look like a pizza? Or at least a pre-pizza. Anyway, let's break this shit up. Go for it. Oh! Probably not meant to do that on the knee, are you? Anyway, we're just going to plop the wax in here. So. Sounds like you're in the toilet. Oh, except for the banging on the bottom part. Oh! <laughs> what do you used to say as a kid? What was that bloody comment that you used to make? Dropping off the kids at the pool or something? Some rubbish that you say. Oh my goodness me. That used to excite, that used to, I used to not like that when he, was a, when he was a little boy and he used to make those jokes. 
<laughs> but he didn't realise he was making jokes because he's my son and I make those stupid jokes all the time. <coughs> and until I actually watched myself record it, I didn't realise how many jokes I make or how bloody annoying I probably was. <laughs> Anyway, we've got to set the temperature between 65 and 75. So I'm going to go with 70 because I'm impatient, but patient enough. Because it says here, if you have your wax too hot when you melt it, the quality will be crap. And we don't want quality crap wax that my wife won't buy off me because that'd be, that'd be pretty shit, wouldn't it? I'm no rocket scientist, but I'm guessing that the hot surface would be about the hotness of 70 degrees that I've set on the 70 degree little thermometer -y thing. I don't know. Does that burn you, would it? 70 degrees? Yeah, it'd bloody hurt. Or anyway, that'd be for sure. We're about to go and have something to eat. So we'll let this little Davy do her thing. It says you put it in here, set it up, let it warm up. Oh, I'm a guessing. It says here about eight to 10 hours. So I would think, and we're gonna come out and check this before we go to bed and then we're just gonna let it do its thing during the evening. And then tomorrow morning, we'll come out and we'll turn on the tap, that tap to let some shit out, let that tap out to let some wax out. And then hopefully, before you know it, we'll have some wicked ass lip balm on your lips.